Welcome back. It is Tuesday, so that means we get to check in with the unconventional dietitian Daphne Olivier. Daphne, thank you so much for joining us virtually this afternoon. Yes, thank you so much for having me. So today we're talking all about sugar and sweeteners. There's so many of them on the market. There are some that are no calories, some with calories. What do people at home need to know? So essentially sweeteners are divided kind of into two parts. Some what we would call um, nutritive sweeteners have calories, which are all gonna be carbohydrates. So all calories that come from sugar are gonna be carbohydrates. So whether it's sugar, like regular sugar, um, what we would consider table sugar or brown sugar or honey or maple syrup or coconut sugar, all those have calories in them. Mm -hmm. And then we have what we call non-nutritive calories, which are non-nutritive sweeteners, which have no calories. So traditionally, that would be like um, Equal or Aspartame, the uh, Splenda or Sucralose and Saccharin or Sweet and Low. So those are our traditional ones, but we have a whole different type of, lots of other types of non-nutritive sweeteners that we can start to dive into a little bit as we go along. Yeah, and so Daphne, is there really like a health benefit if you opt for that zero calorie sweetener? So like way back in the 80s, there everything was all about um, about fat and calories. And so all of the non-nutritive sweeteners, the, the three, the, the yellow, pink, and blue packets were around like 80s and 90s. And the whole purpose of those was to eliminate calories. So we zero calories meant that we were going to eliminate the calories. And what we found over the years is that although we're not necessarily getting calories from those particular things that are sweetened, like your diet beverages or sugar-free foods, those can trigger your brain to cause you to crave more foods that have more carbohydrates in them. So it's an interesting process. I know, I feel like I'm learning so much right now. And we were talking a little bit during the break. I feel like we're gonna dive more into this next week, but there's so many of these sweeteners and sugar substitutes on the market. It can kind of get overwhelming for consumers. Right, so we've had, you know, like I said, the, the aspartame has been around forever since the 70s, and it has been one that has really kind of found its way into lots of different things. But we know that aspartame or equal is really not healthy for our brain. And the fact that it's still on the market is kind of alarming. Um, but because we know that that's not really good for us, there has been a, like a whole Pandora's box of different types of sweeteners that um, some have been researched, some haven't been researched a ton, but that are available for sweetening foods, whether we're doing it ourselves or for the food manufacturers. Daphne, this is a topic I feel like we can talk a lot about. So I'm sure we're going to touch base again about this next week. Thank you so much for starting the conversation with our viewers today. Thank you for having me. We have lots to discuss. <laughs> we do. We'll see you next week, Daphne. Thank you so much for joining us. If you at home want to watch this interview, head to our website, klaf.com. But stay with us. Adam is back after the break.